Hello, my name is Alex Carver. I'm a senior solutions engineer with Pure Storage covering VMware integrations with Pure. We recently released the vSphere Remote Plugin 5.2.0, and with this release, we have some new features, specifically features with vVols integrations and how we're reporting them within vCenter. The first one I want to go ahead and go through is our vVols insights. Here I have the plugin installed and it is running 5.2.0. And I have a couple of arrays registered with the plugin. Now what I want to go ahead and do is show you what the new features are with the vVols insights. I'm going to go ahead and select some VMs that are currently running on vVols. Up here, you'll notice that the card has been updated that now includes capacity and performance. This creates a link that'll take you to the monitor tab. And within the monitor tab, there will now be a pure storage option where there is capacity and performance reported. For capacity, you can look at the capacity changes over a period of time and a summary for the existing virtual disks for this virtual machine. These can be sorted by the guest written. There's an information box here that explains it, how much is written on the array, and then what the array unique space is. By selecting one of these, we can actually see what the metrics are reported for capacity on an individual volume. This period can be seen at a 24 hour, seven day, 30 day, 90 day, or one year level. Conversely, you can look at the volume group, which will report back the volume group on the array that for this VM. And similarly, you can get the same intervals for them. What's nice here though, is additionally, as you can be able to track what the entire VM's growth rate has been over these periods of times or growth changes, you can give a better idea of what the capacity growth for this individual VM or application has been and whatever needs are there. Next is performance. Much like capacity, how we could select individual virtual disks or vVols, we can do the same with performance or we can select the volume group. Now the volume group will go ahead and allow you to view now on a one hour, three hour, 24 hour, and then seven day, 30 day, 90 day, and one year interval for read and write performance. And when drilling into individual ones, let's say write, we can actually get a breakdown of the latency itself. Whether there was SAN latency reported, whether there was any QoS being enabled on these individual volumes during this write load and IO size and so forth. These are all metrics that are retrieved from the array directly via the API. If you were on the CLI for the array, you could go ahead and do a pure host monitor, pure vol monitor, pure vgroup monitor, and be able to get these same things. Now at a VM level or virtual disk level, I should say, you can get that same kind of granular insight to what has been going on with each of these. After that, we have a couple of new workflows that are added to the configure and virtual volume screen for the plugin. First being guest insights. Here we are able to leverage a vCenter API on vSphere 7.0 that allows individual VMs to be able to report back more guest information, uh, provided they have VMware tools installed and are in a recent uh, VMware hardware version. Here, this allows you to have a quick synopsis of what the disk path is and what file system is being used for these individual VMs. So this can vary. If there's not a file system type or it's not provisioned for any of that, then you won't see anything. But if there is a file system type there, you'll be able to go ahead and see that part of it. Or if there are multiple file systems and partitions, you'll be able to see that as well. And this is at a per virtual disk basis that you will be able to go ahead and see these. Additionally, we have the ability to go ahead and rename both the volume group and individual volumes on the array directly from the plugin. 
By clicking on the rename volume, you will get the option to rename the individual volume. In this case, it would be the config vvol and the volume group. And by doing so, this will go ahead and rename the volume group on the array in that individual volume. And that will be reflected there. Now, if I chose only one of this individual virtual disks, I would only be able to rename that individual volume for the vvol given. If you want to rename the volume group, you need to select the VM home. That has been some of our new features with the vSphere plugin 5.2.0, specifically with our vvol insights that have been added for VMs running on vvols. Thank you for watching.